Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. And it's been a while since I shot a video. It's been uh, crazy hot around here. It's been uh, last week, we had, I think, four days. It was 105 and the uh, heat index was up around 115. It's just been crazy. I did manage to get my three uh, consecutive weekly mite treatments done. I went out at, like every Sunday morning right at sunup and I got those done. Uh, I'd like to get one more. I might wait a little bit uh, closer to the fall when it cools off a little bit. Because boy, that, that heat is brutal, especially when you're wearing that uh, respirator. So yeah, I, I did the oxalic acid. So uh, speaking of mite treatments, I want to give a shout out to uh, Gary at G's Bees. It's G-E-E-Z-B-E-E-Z. -E 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 Y'all need to go to his channel and... Uh, and subscribe he's uh he's an oklahoma beekeeper he's got uh over 500 subscribers and uh, if you could help him get to that thousand mark uh, i'd appreciate it so he gave me uh, he saw i was doing my treatments and he he reached out to me and he said hey i got some uh, extra uh mite strips uh do you want them and i was like well yeah i could use eight for my father-in-law and uh because uh, I, I can't get up there and do those those oxalic acid treatments. And he lives quite a ways west of here. So I went over there and he gave me the whole pack of them. And there's over 20 in there. So I gave uh, some to the guy that bought a newt from me. So I gave some to him so he can get his treated. And uh, I'm going to use them in my Apame hives out there. And, uh, and next time I go out to mow out of my father-in-law's, uh, at my brother-in-law's house, uh, I'll uh, get those put in his hive and that'll, that'll have them. He's got two out there. And man, you saw all the uh, quarts. It was uh, three cases and I think four more quarts off of two hives of honey I got off of those. Man, it was something else. Well, let me show you here in the fridge. So here's the package here. I've got them wrapped up in plastic. And uh, so yeah, please check out G's Bees. There's about 20 strips left in here that I'm gonna use. And uh, if there's anyone local that needs some, I'm not gonna be able to use all these. So if you're local, and I reached out to uh, Justin at Sweet Stingers. He didn't need any, he is already done with his. And uh, these are my uh, garden seeds I keep in here with desiccant and keep them in a jar. Got my emergency mead here. And these are jalapenos from last year's garden that I put in Klaus and pickle juice. And man, they are good. Yeah. And uh, for next weekend, I'm planning some smoking. I got me a pork butt here. And I got two ribs that I got on sale uh, earlier in the year that are frozen. Two slabs of ribs and I'm thawing them out. Here's my Hive Alive patties I'm saving for uh, next spring. I got us a ham here, and this is apples for the chickens. I need to get them out there. We got all the apples off my neighbor's tree. My wife made about 40 quarts of apple pie filling. And uh, the Hive of the Live people saw my video on the, the patties, and they sent me this uh, Hive Alive liquid feed, feed enhancer. And I've actually been feeding and using this and I used it uh, during the dearth and it doesn't cause robbing near as bad as the Pro Health or the Honey Bee Healthy. Normally I use this uh, Honey Bee or this uh, Man Lake Pro Health. I got a gallon of it and uh, you can see that's kind of separating there. But uh, this stuff smells like real lemony and it really <laughs> attracts the bees. It's good to use uh, in the springtime. <clears throat> when you're not worried about robbing near as much. But uh, I've been using this and they sent me a nice hat. So thanks for that. I like that hat, it's nice. And uh, I've been using that, mixing it up. Uh, let's see, I use uh, four tablespoons of this in a five gallon bucket. And uh, I've been feeding those uh, hives that have my new wildflower meadow queens, trying to get them heavy in their double deeps. And uh, over here I've got my, uh, some peppers dehydrating got some cayennes there and down the bottom is uh, some jalapenos so i'm gonna crack those all up in my coffee grinder and make some uh, some uh, red pepper flakes 
Okay, this video, I'm going to uh, demonstrate this Hilco bottling tank with the new upgraded uh, dripless valve. And uh, you can see I've been bottling quite a bit. And man, I really like it. I've got quite a few one pounds. I've done some two pounds. I've sold some of those. I've sold quite a few and I've got some three quarter and I've got some glass and uh, I bottled up those three cases of the, the quartz with this from my father-in-law's hive. So let's get some honey in here and I'm going to actually demo this, this valve in action and uh, you can see it. Actually, there's a little bit of honey in there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop five gallons in there and uh, I got some out in the garage there. It's nice and hot. I got a few comments about this little bucket perch. It's called a bucket bench and uh, I got this from Man Lake and uh, I'll see if I have it. I think I have a link to this and I'll try and put it down below but yeah it's really handy when you're uh, emptying out a five gallon bucket you want to you want to sit there and hold it and you're letting it drip out. So your bucket just sits on here. I'll show you how it works. So I got 10 gallons of honey left. I'm not selling near as much honey in bulk this year as I did last year. Last year I was afraid I was not gonna get it all sold. This year I don't think I'll have that problem. Get you a shot of that. Kind of dark down in there. But yeah, you can see how that honey just drips off of there. So we are full to right here. So I'd say almost two thirds full. And it probably had uh, this much in it to start. I believe this holds 18 gallons. That's what he sells it as. It's a Hilco. Okay, so this is a dripless valve. So if you are filling your bottles and you keep moving and you don't waste, waste any time, you don't mess around, it will not drip. But if you fill a bottle and you wait, uh, three or four seconds, you'll get one little drip off of it. And uh, I would assume the uh, other brands do the same thing because it's basically the same design of the parts. So I'm gonna fill, uh, I start out with a half gallon. So this is six pounds and I get $55 for one of these. And I'm only gonna do like four or five of these this year. Last year, I had probably a dozen of these and I sold them all. <laughs> there was a lady that was uh, filling little honey things for uh, baby showers. <laughs> so, so this will give you a good idea of uh, how long it takes to fill a one pound, but I'll do some of those too. So the way I have this set up, it's set right against my counter. So I put this bottle right against the counter and it's positioned perfectly. So let's hit it. It's uh, 85 degrees in here. So this honey on bottom is gonna be 85. The honey I just poured in is gonna be probably closer to 90, 95 degrees. Whoa. And uh, on these smaller bottles, uh, you don't wanna daydream or mess around because uh, it will fill up on you fast and you will overfill it. There we go. Half gallon. That was fast. It's uh, well worth the money upgrading away from the old five gallon bucket and the little turn valve I had on there. So I'll do a two pound. Move my hand so you can see it filling up. This is no air pressure. This is just straight gravity flow. Oh man, I about overdid it. Oh my gosh. Oops, I did overdo it. It's running down the side. 
<laughs> well, taste test. Yep, that's honey, all right. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed if it dripped or not. I don't think it did. It still hadn't dripped. So let's do a one pound. Oh goodness. And uh, before you don't don't uh, don't leave yet. So I've got some uh, something cool to show you out on in the wax. I'm doing some stuff with the wax. A little thing I picked up from Jason Chris Christman. So you want to shut it off before it gets closer to the top because it will uh, fill a little bit after you shut the valve off. So I always try and shut it off when it hits about right there. Perfect. <laughs> so you can see how you can knock out filling a lot of bottles in a hurry. Uh, especially if you got some help, someone putting the caps on them uh, while you're doing the filling. But uh, yeah, I love this thing. This is probably one of the best investments I've done to my honey operation. Uh, besides my uh, nine frame radial extractor, uh, this thing is a huge time saver and I love it. And uh, this, this dripless valve makes it even better. The valve that came on it had one that you raised up and down like that. It has some kind of stick to it, uh, but once you got used to it, you could work it pretty good. But this is just so much better than that. Uh, man, I love it. So let's get out into the garage. I'll show you what I got going on with the wax. I almost forgot. I've got some uh, one ounce wax bars in here in the molds uh, in the freezer. So they'll pop out of the, the molds. Those are just falling out. So yeah. If you ever use these plastic molds, they don't work worth a darn. If you put them in the freezer, they literally just fall out. And I have one of these uh, rubber rubberized ones, silicone, whatever you call it. So this is wax from this, this year's honey harvest from the cappings. Kind of like dominoes. <laughs> And these have no mold release in the molds. It's just poured straight in there. So what I use these for is you can make candles and so you know you've got an ounce there. So a lot of the candle recipes are done. Uh, the molds are called out in ounces and uh, you know how many of these bars to use. And also I use them like a crayon to rub on my frames that need some wax where the bees may not be drawn out in the corners or it's an old frame that uh, they never did draw out <coughs> it needs wax on it again you can rub this off on there and it, and it essentially waxes it and they'll they'll use that frame but i do like to follow up when i can if i'm in here and not out in the field i'll hit it with my hot air gun and that wax will just flow right in there it'll be nice and uniform so yeah, I've got uh, enough wax to do a few more, but uh, along the lines of the crown thing, let me show you what I'm gonna do out here. Okay. Let's see if I can get my camera on this. This is my new wax melter. It's bigger and it holds a lot more wax. So I was able to get uh, pretty much that entire uh, block that you saw earlier into this. So I wanna move this over to the side because I'm gonna need the height. Okay, so the tip that I picked up from Jason Crispin and uh, about the crayon thing, using those little one ounce bars, he had the bright idea, and he probably stole it from somebody too, but use a toilet paper roll and make you a big honking crayon because after a while those little one ounce bars get really tiny and they're hard to hang on to this will last longer and it's a little bigger to hold on to so it'll be good till you get you know right down to the nub and then you can just turn it on its side so uh, i got uh, 
for these. I don't know if I got enough wax left in there to fill them up, but uh, let's, let's give it a shot and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, sometimes uh, this nozzle won't be hot enough for the wax to flow and I have to hit it with my heat gun, but uh, let's see if we can get it to flow. And uh, as I get them filled up, I'm gonna set them down here below. Oh yeah, it's flowing. Hopefully it doesn't flow through that tape and drip on my hand. And it is going through the tape. So I didn't plan that very good. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm gonna put those inside of this other mold. Cause that ain't gonna work. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Ouch. So the masking tape trick didn't do so good. We'll try it in this one, see if it's leaking. Probably is. Now that one's holding. I'll just do it like this and forget that other one. And hopefully these others don't leak. Whew, it is hot out here. I'm just gonna do a little and see if they leak on me. Looks like it's just that one I started with. Oh, that one there's trying to leak just a hair. Okay, we'll set them down here. Let them cool off. We'll have three anyways. Okay, we're gonna have three big crayons there. And you can see it's leaking just a little bit there. I think it's this one right here on the left. But uh, yeah, that'll be good. So uh, I rub that on these frames. You just rub it on there. And uh, I'll show you with a one ounce bar what it looks like. So this is right cell foundation and it has some wax on it, but it's not a whole lot. And as they sit over time, I think the wax it dries out. I, I don't know. It's just not as effective, it seems like, after it sits for a while. But you can just do this. And uh, see how it wears off. But yeah, with those big old crayons, it'll last a lot longer. So what I like to do after this, you can do this in the field uh, and just leave it that way. It supposedly works, but I like to hit it with my hot air gun. And you can see that wax start to glaze. And it's good to go. Okay, you can see my wax is draining out on these, so... Yeah, that masking tape thing didn't work out so well. So if you try this, uh, I'd probably use duct tape. That would probably do a lot better. It's a lot more pliable. But uh, this one looks like it's going to be drained out before it's all done. I may have three cardboard tubes sitting in a puddle of wax. But uh, you get the gist. But uh, that's, that's, that's how you do it. Well, so that's going to be it for this video. I thought I'd shoot something indoors where it's not so hot. But uh, it's uh, 85 today. About caught a chill for the high. <laughs> but, uh, I'm going to try and get out there and shoot a uh, video in the bee yard. I got the, all those uh, newer hives that are splits and nukes and all of that. Um, some are building up. Some are not doing so good. One decided to supersede. And... Uh, that's a death sentence around here this time of year. It's like zero chance of getting a mated queen back this time of year. I think it's the dragonflies. They're, they're just flying all over out there uh, catching bees. So a queen bee is probably the slowest thing flying out there that they can catch and uh, chomp its head off. But <laughs> anyway, that's the end of the video. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe over there to G's Bees. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not. We'll catch you on the next beekeeper video. Y'all take care.